Welcome to the Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. What are your personal goals uh, for this endeavor? What, you, what, what would you like to see? That Dallas Seminary will be successful mm-hmm. in uh, engagement of culture. Uh, we've said it in different ways, but uh, if you could just uh, summarize that in a sentence or two, uh, we we will uh, do a great job of engaging the culture uh, if we do it this way for this kind of a purpose. How would you how would you answer that? I pray that we are known for having a Christian response and walk in our culture. Um, there's a lot that comes out in the Christian community. Let's just call it what it is. I don't think it's it's not done Christianly. Mm-hmm. And that's a little bit of this tone aspect that mm-hmm. we've talked about. I pray that what comes out of this is that it's not just the content. While we're all concerned about the content, there's no doubt about that. How we carry that content out is just as critical. You can say the right thing and you can say it the wrong way. And what you have just said has been negated. And so my prayer is that we model to our students and that the students learn. I'm, I'm already excited about some of the discussion I've heard from some of the chapels that we've already done that will be coming out in podcast a little bit later on. I'm really excited to hear some of the tone of the students pick up on that tone. Right. Their tone is modeling that tone. That's encouraging to me because I think that, again, what we see and hear a lot, um, we've just had some discussions about that, uh, that some of us in in our generation, we've not done as good a job as we need to do. And so now it's an opportunity for us to lay the mantle on a new generation that's going to minister in brand new ways and to say, this is now a battlefront for you. Battle maybe is not the best word, but it's going to be a challenge for them to walk Christianly and to have the tone that comes out Christianly in these very significant discussions in our culture. And it's not just a Western thing, but this is a global issue. You guys talk about the, the, some of the Luzon issues. You know, there's a beckoning to the Western church right now of how are we going to handle even some of these topics. So that, I think it's one of tone. That I, that has been, that's one of my prayers through this. I have different audiences in mind. Uh, I mean, to the Christian church, my hope is is that we do a, a service to them that helps them in in orienting themselves to these different topics, not only in terms of the content, but even the way in which the arguments are made and presented and the biblical basis for it, and et cetera. There's that. I think for someone who's a non-Christian, I hope that they are fascinated by what we do mm-hmm. and that and that they might see that their impression of what Christianity is and what they think Christianity is may in some cases be a misread of what's really going on and that we are able to communicate that enough that some may may get that. Uh, my hope would be that we have enough of a global perspective in what we do and how we talk about things that we're not we're not nearsighted. We're not we're not nearsighted with regard to only thinking in a in a in a Western Christian way, or in a, or or in a or in a, an American Christian way, one of my hopes is to bring enough global dimensions to the guests that we have and perspectives that everyone appreciates the global nature of Christianity. You know, Christianity is not a national religion; it, 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 it is it is it is a global faith, and so I'm hoping that we communicate that. So, so there are a variety of ways that I that, that I hope. So I hope when someone listens to the table. Or they hear a chapel, or they come to a, a conference event, that they walk away and say, "I learned something. I learned about how to communicate it well, and I appreciated even how the gospel was reflected and how it was done." And uh, that those, I guess, are my are, are are my hopes. Mr. President, can I do one thing here? Sure. Can, may I? This is a, this is the worst pun of the day. Can I turn the table? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say you that, <laughs> Mr. President. What, what are your goals? There you go. What, what are your goals in all of this? Sure, my my goal really to reflect a tone of Christian love, to uh, not at all compromise the truth, but to to engage, so that uh, I, I think of the word resource. Mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. one of the best things that we could do as a seminary, with the expertise that we have on campus. 
uh, the contacts of expertise we have off campus, mm -hmm. the alumni we have around the world, the recommendations of those in Christian leadership that all of us get to rub shoulders with, sure. whether it's fellow deans, fellow presidents, fellow professors uh, that are a part of our academic and ministry world, all of us, uh, pastors and church leaders and ministry leaders. Uh, we, we all serve on churches or boards uh, in which we have a, a wonderful opportunity to find resource, mm -hmm. but to provide those resources so that coming out of a podcast, here is a list of a bibliographic resource, here is a list of argumentation, here is uh, places to go beyond us, uh, where people who are interested and have a compassion for our world would find the, the needed material to engage. Uh, with great tone and great truth. You know, we, our, our, our slogan for years here is, has been uh, teach truth and love well. And I think it's a great tagline. And uh, uh, just a slight tweak I'd like to make is my hope is is that we reflect truth and love well. And and by that, what I mean by that is, is that we're not just interested in disseminating con content. Right. Uh, content's important. You can't get there uh, with without it. But there's a way in which it is delivered that also is important. Sometimes it means a confrontation. Sometimes it means a gentle word. A lot of times it needs an explanation right and i hope that we develop in people a sense of you know when is the right <laughs> what's the right choice yeah the, the wisdom right. for what approach exactly exactly and what, what's the right choice and, and and what's the right combination and those kinds of things and that's going to take work and and frankly you know sometimes we'll probably misstep uh, we, you know, um, we don't claim to have an, an errant understanding of the truth by any means. We'll misstep. There'll be times, so I would ask people to be gracious with us. These topics are not easy, and because they're not easy, the answers aren't always clear, and it won't be transparent uh, what you should do. And there might actually be places where there is a good, healthy disagreement about exactly what to do. Um, and part of what we hope to do in some cases will be to show that conversation. We may not actually in certain places actually come down on a particular uh, particular line to take uh, because of the difficulty of the discussion and the in the possibilities uh, that uh, that where good Christians might legitimately disagree with one another so so we're, uh, we're going to try and display grace I guess what I'm saying now is I'm hoping that the audience uh, gives us a little bit of grace because <laughs> these areas are not easy and uh, and we don't pretend to have all the answers. You're not saying that churches disagree on worship styles. Not at all. And uh, <laughs> ways to extract church discipline. That's exactly uh, right. Ways to govern people. Uh, yeah, it, it's a it, it is a, a variety out there. Uh, let me go back and take one more round. That what came to mind as both of you were talking these last couple of questions and answer series is that we have been big on uh, promoting family, but we're not as good at living family. And, and the amazing thing is I don't think the world sees the Christian church with the model of what genuine family could be. And so they, for them uh, to toss over a marriage, uh, to uh, just basically extricate a kid you know, out of their lives and things like that, uh, they don't see the redemptive, they don't see the reconciliation, they don't see the respect, they don't see the love demonstrated that has made family different. Which is a condemnation to the church. Yeah, because uh, the churches have done not done very well in the area of divorce in a lot of cases. Exactly. And I, I, I come back to uh, one of those verses that we have used, and uh, it's actually on the wall of our Campbell Academic Center uh, because it so uh, epitomized Dr. Campbell and his ministry. But one of his favorite passages was Ezra 7.10, that Ezra purposed in his heart to study uh, the law, uh, to uh, live it. Uh, that reflected. Mm -hmm. That's what came out of your mm -hmm. conversation, to reflect it, and then to teach the statutes and oracles in Israel. Mm -hmm. For us to reflect that truth uh, in our own lives as a platform, hopefully to share that truth with others, uh, that, that order of dedication, uh, reflection, and propagation is a, is a critical order coming from that passage. Uh, one, one quick uh, mechanical question. Uh, if people want to know uh, where they can get uh, material that we have done on the broadcast, or if they want to make 
suggestions about future topics. Uh, how, how would they do that? Well, I, I will we'll certainly be posted on our website on www.dts.edu. Um, that's for sure. And we think uh, we'll have it set up to be subscribable uh, through uh, iTunes. Um, so those two means will at least get you access to those things that we're going to offer directly to the public without charge, uh, and, which is going to be a lot. Uh, so that's for sure. If you want suggestions, offer suggestions about things that you'd like to have covered, um, we can't commit to responding to every request that will come in. But if you will write uh, to me at the seminary. Um, this is dangerous. Dbach at dts.edu. Um, Let me say that one more time. <laughs> Dbach at dts.edu. And if I get flooded after this, I'm going to regret having done that. But anyway, uh, we 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 actually we've actually already polled our faculty for what they mm-hmm. think we should cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a full intention of polling uh, alumni for what they hope we should cover. And we've already heard from a bunch of alumni uh, about right? the sure. certain things we've already posted. We had our first chapel. A couple of weeks ago, and we've already posted that, and uh, and gotten getting to get feedback on that. So, so um, just let us know, and then and then just be patient because it'll be a key, it'll be in a queue, and uh, and you know, and plus you know, it, it takes it takes some resources to get there. So, um, so anyway, so we're uh, but if you can let us know, then we'll do our best if we get enough requests on the same topic um, to to follow through. What what are some of the topics that we have on the uh, on the docket that we are uh, working on, uh, planning to uh, talk about and release in in the near future? Well, we're beginning with a series on cultural engagement, just to talk about what this is and look at it from various angles. So, um, this is the first of what will be several broadcasts, and this is the way we're going to do the podcast, at least initially, is we're going to take a topic and then we're going to look at it from several angles and then we'll move to a new one rather than doing one at a time. So, for example, in cultural engagement, we've got cultural engagement. Uh, this one, we've got one with our faculty that's going to talk about the importance of cultural engagement, looking at it from a theological angle, from a global angle. Uh, then we're going to do one uh, on uh, cultural engagement in the media. We have we have Kirby Anderson uh, coming in and talking about his experience in the media, along with my experience in the media, and, that, and we're sharing how, how media works and how Christian to think about the media and, the, and its role and the way it sees itself so you can understand what they – what they see their task as being and why that sometimes is a disconnect. Um, we're going to have uh, Reg Grant come in and talk about uh, cultural engagement in the arts. I'm going to bring in uh, Ramesh Richards and Barry Jones to talk about uh, global aspects of cultural engagement. And then we're going to shift and move to the next topic, which is going to be – we're going to do a segment every now and then on religions of the world. And the first one will be Islam. And so the only uh, DTS dialogue that we are resurrecting for, uh, for, for this sequence, at least at this point, is a terrific interview we did with Dudley Woodbury years ago in which he, as a, someone who lived in a Muslim country, he is a missionary to uh, – People to Muslims uh, talks about Islam, his experience with Islam, etc., and explains uh, Islam uh, to us. Uh, and it's a it's a wonderful uh, presentation and and just so crisp and well done. Then we're going to look at uh, Bible translations in the context of Islam, and then we're going to look at uh, we're going to interview some people who came to Christianity out of Islam as well as people who've lived in Islamic communities as Christians to talk about that experience. We're going to interview someone who lives in Europe to talk about um, the impact of uh, Islamic presence uh, in Europe. Uh, That gives you a feel for the variety. Then we're going to shift to to, uh, the historical Adam. (laughs) <laughs> you know, just it's just easy topics, uh, and and, uh, and the debate that's gone on in in in, in um, particularly in evangelicalism over the last year and a half or so about historical Adam, and we'll again look at this from a variety of angles from the standpoint of the of the text, the ancient Near Eastern background, uh, the issues that are related to the New Testament. Uh, we're going to hear reports about uh, what. Have, has been discussed on Christian college campuses and that kind of thing, and then the, and then as if those weren't simple enough, we'll turn our attention to sexuality, 
and in particular discuss the relationship of the church in ministering to the homosexual community and the issues that that raises, issues of family, uh, the issue of counseling in these kinds of areas, that kind of thing. So you can get a sense just from the first four topics, the range of what it is we're going to try and cover and how we're going to go about doing this. Each podcast will run for around an hour. But we will release them. We're planning to release them at least initially in 15-minute segments. Uh, we hope eventually to get to where we will set a time to stream live on a regular basis, so people who want to to uh, connect with us can do that, and maybe even get to the point where we're taking uh, questions live. Uh, but initially, we'll do it on tape and release them in 15-minute increments. One of the other aspects that we would like to do as well is uh, provide resources. Uh, there may be a subscription cost. There may be a nominal cost for those resources that uh, people can purchase uh, through uh, the Center for Christian Leadership and Cultural Engagement that would be uh, uh, resources that would help them in ministry. And so uh, there's there's a variety of things that we have on the on the on the table. Yeah, we're trying to plan for those, and we and we want people to know up front that what we're going to do in the first year is everything that we offer is going to be available to them directly at no charge. But this is this is not a, an inexpensive operation to undertake. The fact is, the very fact that you see three of us sitting here doesn't indicate the staff of people who have to man the cameras, listen to the audio, and in some cases edit the pieces, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into doing this and, and, and resources. So to be honest, we have to, we have to raise some money to be able to do this, and hopefully if we minister effectively to the church, we're hoping that a really minor fee will give you access some, to some additional things that we're doing beyond the podcast that, and, that, and that fill out what we're doing. And then that are, that are worth it. Uh, we're hoping the charge will be really minimal. My my joke is a coke a month, <laughs> and uh, uh, if you're willing to invest a coke a month across a year, uh, you can get access to these to these resources. But we won't do that for a while because we have to set it up. Plus, we want to show people kind of what the map is of what we're going to do, and and so and so we'll be releasing things. And in some cases, we'll say this will always be free, and this is the type of thing that will go into the subscriptions. So they can see before they're asked to subscribe what it is that they will be paying for. Great. Any closing comments, Mark? It's, it's exciting um, uh, for us to be sitting here at the table uh, talking about this. Uh, what an opportunity for us at Dallas Seminary to carry out our mission in a whole new way. It's a it's a privilege and it's also a responsibility and we take that seriously. Mm -hmm. Daryl, thank you for taking uh, the challenge and being willing to step up to the plate and uh, help give uh, leadership to this initiative. And Mark, thank you for uh, all uh, that you do and have done to uh, put this in place as well. And uh, we appreciate it. Lord bless you. Thanks for listening to the Table Podcast. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth, love well.